Hello and welcome to Portfolio Matters Share Talk. In today's episode, we will be talking about the small Canadian listed company, Ares Strategic, which has a floor spa development in Utah, the US. But before we get into it, Richard will read the disclaimer. Thank you, Keith. Everything discussed during the Portfolio Matters podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be considered as investment advice. Listeners should be aware that we will be discussing securities that we own or have a financial interest in. Please do your own research or consult a professional investment advisor before making any decisions regarding topics mentioned on the show. A full disclaimer can be found at the end. Over to you, Keith. First of all, thank you very much to Ali Baroid who is one of our subscribers on our Discord channel, who put us onto this company, um, which is small and rather obscure and is listed on the Toronto Venture Exchange and has a floor spa development in Utah. So it's um, actually the share price has ticked down in the last couple of days, but uh, share price is around um, 60 cents Canadian and the market cap is about 36 million sterling. The, um, it's got very little cash. Um, enterprise value it's a, pretty much the same as market cap, 35 million. But this is really interesting. Um, floor spa is calcium fluoride and it is the main source of fluorine and the US don't produce any domestically. The biggest producer in the world is China and they have recently become net importers. Last year the US imported 430,000 tons of floor spa which actually is a key ingredient in several strategic industries including iron smelting and the aluminium production. So the US have designated it a strategic mineral and that makes permitting much easier. So our strategic are looking for an important industrial mineral. They have the only source of it with permitting in the US. There's no other existing mine in production or actually even in the permitting process, according to the CEO in a recent interview. In addition, the cost of capital for setting up the operation is very low and they are fully funded. Construction is on going on on the construction site for the plant right now. And they're aiming to have the everything in production by the end of this year. So, the only question mark is that they have decided to go ahead without an estimate of the total resource in place. Essentially, they're so confident of the size of the floor spa on their land that they think they can go ahead without doing um, a resource estimate because they've already got the funding. And we will go through a calculation at the end where if we believe their OPEX calculation and bearing in mind that the world is undergoing quite a lot of inflation at the moment and that may drift upwards, but if we believe their OPEX figures, then this looks really good actually and there appear to be very few barriers remaining to have an operating mine this is the share price um you notice this company has been going quite a long time since 2012 but it wasn't the same company Originally, this company was called Northern Iron Corp, and it was looking for iron and other minerals around um, Ontario in Canada. Then in 2016, it changed its name to Lithium Energy Products and was exploring for lithium in Nevada and Arizona. And then 
on April Fool's Day 2019, it acquired the fluorite mine, the lost cheap fluorite mine in an all shared deal. And since then, it has changed its name to Ares Strategic. So if we go through events since the 1st of April 2019, in the 6th of January 2020, it signed an agreement with Sprott Partners, a $3.5 million placing at $0.08. Cents. Now, bear in mind, the share price is now actually $0.59. Cents. Um, further placings at $0.08 cents in February 2020. Um, drilling results listing on the OTC chain exchange in the US. It's uh, working on the mine design and further firming up the uh, floor spa uh, property and what it thinks it has, acquiring further acreage. And actually, this is a very fast development. You know, we're talking about from beginning of January 2020 to commencing the work for the construction of the plant in May 2021. So that's really fast and it required actually very little capital. Um, now, it has this relationship with Mujim Group, who are, um, have the process for processing floor spa lumps, and it has bought machinery from them, and we will go through that. Okay, so what is floor spa? Well, floor spa is the common name for calcium fluoride is the main source of fluorine. So in 2020, the US produced no domestic floor spa, but they did produce some fluorine, some fluorosilicic acid, uh, equivalent to 27,000 tons of floor spa as a byproduct of phosphoric acid production. But its consumption in 2019 was 430,000 tons world production was 7 million tons so it had to import a lot of floor spa and hence the us has designated floor spa a strategic mineral and permitting has been accelerated and as we will see the usda has actually financed the development of this mine and one of the puzzles we have is why the company has not mentioned this funding in its presentations. You'll see that I got this from the CEO in an email. So there are various types of floor spa. There's acid grade, which they called acid spa, and that has a purity of 97% and above, and that's used in aluminium production to lower the temperature in the um, well, of aluminium production beyond the scope of this presentation, I think. Um, also in the manufacture of hydrofluoric acid, which is the strongest acid known to man and has used in loads and loads of stuff. As a brief aside, when I was doing my chemistry degree, they used to have a picture in the Dyson Perrins of a man holding, he was faced away from the camera and he was holding up his right hand. And his right hand was missing all the fingers. And actually it had the bone exposed where the flesh had been eaten off the, um, his fingers. And what had happened was he had been using hydrofluoric acid and there was a hole in the gloves. And the hydrofluoric acid had eaten through the flesh of his hand faster than the nerves could fire. So he'd been completely unaware that his fingers were dissolving until it, he realized he couldn't move them anymore and he took his hand out of the gloves. Um, the other grade is metallurgical grade and that is purity of 60 to 85% and that is yield used in steel production and also in cement. So actually this is quite an important mineral this is used in loads of actually fairly basic industries 
Um, and this is all from the visual capital capitalist. And so it's used in steel making, enriched uranium, aluminium production, petroleum based fuels. Um, but the big things are, you know, lots of high tech products contain um, fluorine. So refrigerants, that's uh, chlorofluorocarbons. They responsible for destroying the ozone layer, amongst other things. Teflon. Um, and Gore-Tex is actually strained te Teflon. Um, so fluorine is used in lots of stuff. Now, the one question we have is that the U.S. imports, according to VSA Capital, 376,000 tons in 2019. Now, when phase two of the lost cheap mine goes into operation from 2024, it should be producing 134,000 tonnes per annum. And that is actually a sizable chunk of US needs. So the question then is, will that affect the price? Now, will that affect the price in the context of 7 million tonnes worth of world production you would hope not but it's certainly a big percentage of u.s consumption okay so let's look at what projects are as strategic have and it is not lot just lost cheap but lost cheap will be the focus of this presentation and the, all the other projects are at a very early exploration stage. Okay, so the Lost Sheep Mine is in Utah. It's got 67 claims covering 1,400 acres. It's fully permitted. Now, another puzzle we have is that it says in the, on the company website that the Lost Sheep Mine was already producing and selling floor spa to brokers and steel mills in the US. But when we go through the annual results, you'll see there are no revenues. So how does that work? Not sure. The company has begun investing and upgrading the mine and its facilities right now. That began in May. So work going on to be so that they will hopefully start mining by the end of this year. And they're designing a high capacity plant and aiming for phase two in 2024 and it will be the only floor spa mine in production in the US and according to the CEO the only one going through the permitting process. It also has various other projects the uh, Apricot Lake Lithium project um, but essentially there are very little details on that. It has a an iron vanadium project in Canada um again there doesn't see the development of that they're very much in the exploration stage rather than the development stage and they have another floor spa project in alaska which is potentially in right so moving on to lost sheep okay so this is a view from above showing the drill holes they have done into the two existing mines pit mines at lost sheep and then if we go to a cross-sectional view these lines show the drill holes and the colored bars show the concentration of floor spar found throughout those drill holes and red is the best so red is 80 to 100 percent floor spa so it's amazing the the concentration of calcium fluoride you get actually in these mines so if you think about copper you think a high concentration would be 12 percent here you're getting 80 to 100 percent calcium fluoride amazing and over the whole length of these um holes your average of 50 to 45 to 50 percent and this is drill holes the second um cross section 
And again, you know, when you cross these, they're called pipes, you get very high concentrations of calcium fluoride. And the way they're going to mine these, are they're going to go in horizontally at an angle on a ramp and then mine vertically the pipes. We'll see a diagram later. Now, this is a view of their whole prospect area, and they have identified over a hundred surface targets, surface, uh, show, surface shows of floor spar. So, hence, they're not bothering to do a um, resource assessment because they think they've got lots of stuff here. They have no concerns about the life of mine and the size of the resource and the area was originally mined artisanally and there was no systemic survey and they're saying the ceo is saying that they think that all these pipes originate from a lower ore body and they hope to uh, eventually identify where this ore body is and so then you're talking about a huge resource. This is another view and shows actually all the old mines and there are loads of old mines, basically, as the CEO says, it was originally mined artisanally. OK, so let's run through the corporate presentation. Um, seen this already highest naturally occurring floor spa grades in north america um, higher grades than mexico or vietnam um, grades up to 75 percent and here you see a histogram of the drill essay results you know very high grades and um, these are all the pipe locations all over this property. And this is how they're going to mine it. Ramps and then um, drilling into, blasting into the, um, the pipes. And this is a really cheap development. So you're looking at capex are below 10 million they've also signed a an equipment leasing agreement for 10 million um so uh, they're fully funded and their opex estimates are about 150 dollars a ton and they're saying that floor spa acid spa is currently retailing for about 650 dollars a ton so that gives you an, an enormous profit margin now when we go through our calculation later i will be assuming that sustaining capex is included in this line here so all the costs including general and administrative are included in the opex and they have been testing and they have been able to produce very high um, grade floor spa. So they can sell acid spa. Has achieved 99.9% .9 floor spa grades with 92% recovery. Now, the other thing is there is a quite a big gap geographically between the location of the mine and the processing facility at Delta. And the processing facility at Delta is right next to the railroad, but it's 98 kilometers by road away from the mine. So they're intending to have a fleet of trucks in rotation, taking the ore, they're stating 60% floor spa grade to the Delta processing facility. And they're aiming to expand 
near term. So they have plans to move from 5,000 tons a month to 10,000 within three years. Well, actually, they start production in 2022. In 2024, they're hoping to reach their phase two, which is 10,000 tons a month. But expansion capital, this is a low cost development. So here he's saying asset supply is currently priced at 550, but we, the limited information we have available, asset spa prices appear to be $650 a ton currently, but it's quite a speciality product and we haven't been able to find any graphs. Well, we don't pay for this stuff, sadly. So there's no publicly available data and the, um, through contacts, thank you to Ali Baroid again. Um, his contacts are saying $650 a ton. Okay, if we look at the last interim results, the first puzzle is there are no revenues. They previously stated, and they state on their website, that this is a working mine. They've taken over a working mine that was selling floor spa to smelters in the US. So how come there's no revenues? They closed it down while they redevelop it? Not sure. Um, the other thing, so there are only expenses. And if we look at the expenses, they are around 1.9 million Canadian dollars per annum, which is about 1.1 million sterling, um, which it doesn't seem too bad. Moving on. Um, now, the one puzzle we had, Richard, would you like to explain this? Thanks, Steve. Yeah, the, the question is, um, why have they added um, to the um, to the cash flow the recovery of min the recovery of mineral properties? So basically, in a previous period, as Keith has no noted in that note underneath, they. Um, had to put through an impairment of a property title because they hadn't renewed a permit appropriately. And uh, an impairment in, into uh, an intangible asset is, is a non-cash item, but it gets charged to the profit and loss account. So when you write it back, i.e. You, you don't no longer need the imper impairment, um, the profit and loss account is boosted by um, removing the right the right off of the impairment, but it doesn't have a cash effect. So when you adjust profit and loss to cash flow forecast, you have to subtract the profit that was created by removing the impairment. And that's what's happening here. Right. Thank and it's a big you. chunk in comparison to the other numbers. Exactly. And if you're interested, I'd urge you to watch the interview with VSA Capital in particular. So who is he? Where does he come from? Well, he joined the company in October 2016, which actually was long before they acquired the mine, which I believe was in April Fool's Day 2019. So he joined it when it was Lithium Energy Products. And um, he is a graduate of Cranfield University, which we have looked up and appears to be a technical university. And before that, he was product and production and engineering project manager with the Ministry of Defense, and then a nuclear physicist. So anyway, interesting. But he has not He's not a new hire who has come in and taken over the company post the um, lithium, the move from lithium to floor spa. He was responsible for finding this development. Okay, so what is the current status? Well, they have very recently actually started construction. In February 2021, they purchased a lumps processing plant from Mujim for $2 million, which they settled in shares. 
And Mujim will also receive $10 a ton from future sales. So gross revenue royalty in essence. Um, they then, in 20, November 2020, they signed a $10 million equipment leasing arrangement uh, for which they paid 10% of the cost. So their equipment needs are met. And in May 2021, they basically decided to go ahead without doing a um, resource assessment. Now, VSA Capital state that it, the project is fully funded, fully, fully permitted, and has a published mine plan with upfront capital cost below 10 million. In May 2021, the, um, they have basically started construction of the lumps plant and also the uh, processing plant and uh, offices at Delta. And they're also doing further geological work, trying to firm up the resources. So where does this put us on the um, mining life cycle map? And I think it puts us right at the start of value creation. So the mine development is very short. They've got all the capital, they've got all, the, um, and they've started building the processing plant. And as soon as that's done, by the end of this year, hopefully they'll start mining. Then in 2022, they'll start producing and selling floor spar. And in 2024, they will um, expand and double production. Right, now, I was puzzled by the fact they only had $1 million worth of capital cash on the balance sheet. They had signed a leasing arrangement for the equipment, but they still needed $10 million to build the processing plant. And where was that money coming from? VSA Capital was stating it was fully funded, but I couldn't see any statement of where those funds were coming from. So I emailed them. Um, the capital cost is around $8 million. In your last annual report, the company reported cash of 1.1 million. How will the development be funded? And I got a res reply very quickly from James Walker, CEO. Hi, Keith. The cash at the time of the financials is not the remaining reserve since those financials we have spent, since those financials, we have spent over $1.5 million on the project and still have just over $2 million in the account. We always have the option of raising more money in the market. We just never raise more than we need at the time to prevent dilution. Very good, we approve of that. But as we are the only floor spa mine in the US, we qualify for government investment and the USDA has pledged $13 million to our project, which more than gets us into production with a lot left over. I mean, that is fairly crucial information, frankly. They are fully funded. They've got no financing problems whatsoever. Why isn't this in the, the presentation? I don't know. But anyway, there you have it. Funding needs sorted. So let's do a quick calculation. And this is entirely based on their OPEX estimates. And their OPEX estimate includes underground development, underground mining, and I assume underground development includes sustaining capital costs. Um, processing plant, GNA. Okay. So everything is included in $150 a ton. Now, using $550 a ton which is what they state in the last presentation, we get to nice numbers. P ratio of 2.3 in phase one, $5,000 a month. Phase two, assuming the OPEX stays the same, that is a big assumption. Then you get to 
a P ratio of 1.1. Now, if we assume the acid spar price is $650 a ton, then the numbers look even better. Now, we are assuming, of course, that all they sell is acid spar, which is the highest grade, and that is almost certainly not going to be true. But these, these numbers give you an idea of where you are, and the shares look really cheap, frankly, particularly at 650, and particularly once phase two comes into operation. Um, and the bottom line is there are no um, funding, there are no obstacles left to getting this, this going. They're fully permitted, fully funded. So moving on to the positives and negatives. Uh, processing is minimal and environmentally friendly. Really, you don't have to process it much. You basically crush it, wash it, and then um, separate it out. So you know, low, low intensity. They're saying it's environmentally friendly. It's been designated as a critical mineral by the US, which means permitting much easier. And as we have seen, the USDA is even funding them. Construction has started on the processing plant. It's in a stable, low cost, uh, low tax rate jurisdiction. And plant is expected to be up and running by end of 2021, first sales in 2022. Um, it looks cheap. Negatives. Well, there is no resource estimate. We are basically having to take it on trust that management believe that there's a lot of floor spa and you know they basically the bottom line is they're fully funded so they don't need to do it because you know they don't need to convince anyone to give them the money but you know we don't therefore have any estimate of the total resource available and the mine life and you know we just have to take it on trust that there are these hundred identified floor spa pipes and there's a it's a big resource um now they state it's a fully functioning mine already selling floor spa to steel smelters but you know how come the revenues are zero don't understand that and yeah it's a development opportunity with all the usual risks so you could have a, a mine collapse, et cetera, et cetera. The shares are listed in Toronto on the Venture Exchange and they are illiquid. Um, and floor spa price has risen quite a lot recently. How much speculation is in that price? Also, it's a very opaque market. It's difficult to really know what the floor spa price is because it's not publicly quoted on an exchange etc and when phase two comes into operation they'll be producing around 35 percent of current us imports will that affect the price of course floor spa is a commodity presumably they'll just um, import less from china and the chinese imports uh, exports will go elsewhere and in a total overall market of 7 million tons then you'd hope it wouldn't really affect the price but it is a big percentage of US imports so Richard what are your thoughts? Thanks Keith a very interesting interesting presentation I'll say it looks um looks like a bit of steel doesn't it without being yeah. unduly positive um, and irrationally positive, it does look like it's um, something the market has overlooked. It's very interesting that Sprott invested in it, um, and since since they invested, the the price has gone up, you know, eightfold or whatever or sevenfold, yeah. which is what Sprott does and what they do extremely well. And clearly, someone is behind driving this thing forward very fast and hard. And um, I like the fact that they're not going with the jaw and they're just going to production. They don't need it. They don't need the funding. So let's yep. get cash flow going, they're saying. And I think that's uh, entrepreneurial and good. Um, I have had a quick look around and a couple of um, the accounts that I am familiar with 
uh, it can't be traded actually. So I was curious as to what um, platform you're, you're you're trading it on, if you could say. I'm trading it on Interactive Broker. Right. Okay. I haven't looked at that one yet, so I'll have a look at that. Uh, so clearly, some some uh, platforms consider it to be too small and risky uh, to want to offer it to their clients. So people may, if they're interested in buying it, may have to look around a bit. But uh, I think it's a very interesting find. And as you say, Keith, thank you to Ali Baroid for um, raising it, bringing it to our attention. And uh, thank you to you, to you for all your hard work and the diligence with which you've gone into it. Um, and uh, it does seem to be a very good story. It does seem to be a good story. And uh, frankly, I bought quite a lot and I'm trying to buy more, but it's very liquid. It's on the Venture Exchange. So the it only trades in whole cents. So the price is, you know, 60 cents bid, 61 offered. Um, and not much is traded, but you would hope that once it's in operation and profitable, it would move to one of the bigger exchanges. Yeah. But this is not never going to be a huge company. No. Yeah. You could see a market cap of a hundred million, 150 million if things yeah. go really well. Yeah. But it's not, you know. Um, but it's a very interesting uh, uh, extractive industry to, to look at. And um, it's very interesting to hear about Floor Spa. Yes, absolutely. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I mean, the, the fact that it is um, going to be the only mine in the US, I mean, what's not to love? And the shares are dirt cheap. So, you know, fully funded, firmly, fully permitted. It's got funding from the USDA. It's got the official stamp of approval. Yeah. You know, yeah. I can't yeah. see what's not to love. So I bought a load. I mean, I think you've got to back what, you know, your yeah. uh, judgment. And this just looks great. I think, so I think thank you to Ali Boyd. I think your assessment is probably right, Keith. And thank you to you for doing such a great presentation. Very welcome. Okay. So thank you, Richard. Um, please can you press like and subscribe to the channel? Thank you for watching. And in the meantime, it's goodbye from Richard Wheater. And it's goodbye from Keith Jordan. Goodbye. Goodbye. Full disclaimer. The material and information contained in this podcast is for information and entertainment purposes only and should not be relied upon for making a business, legal or any other decision. We may own or have a financial interest in any securities mentioned. Listeners should conduct their own research or consult a professional investment advisor before making any decisions regarding topics mentioned on the show. Whilst we endeavour to ensure that the information presented on the show is correct, we make no representations or warranties of any kind, expressed or implied, with respect to the podcast and website or to any information, products, services or related graphics discussed or presented in the podcast or website. Any reliance you place on such material is strictly at your own risk. You are solely responsible for the investment decisions you make. We will not be responsible for any errors or omissions in the podcast or website, including in articles or postings, for hyperlinks embedded in messages or for any results obtained from use of such information. Nor will we be liable for any loss or damage, including consequential damages, if any, caused by a reader's reliance on any information provided by the podcast or website. Please do not listen to the podcast if you do not accept self-responsibility for your actions.